Now I want to show you what happens sometimes. Let's say 48 divided by 7. So 4 divided by 7. How many times does 7 go into 4? And the answer is it can't because the multiples of 7 are 0 and then 7, which is more than 4. So it goes 0 times. Step 2 is to multiply 0 times 7. The answer is 0. So we're going to subtract 4 minus 0. And we're going to be left with our 4. And we check. I have four $10 bills and seven people. Can they each have another one? No. So I'm going to bring down my eight. So now, I'm going to divide again. Now I have four $10, four $10 bills that I couldn't divide before, so I'm going to trade those in for $41 bills plus the eight. So now I have 48 $1 bills. Seven goes into 48 six times. Six times seven is 42. Step three is to subtract. I had 48. I made seven groups of six, which is seven times six, 42. How many do I have left? So I subtract. I used 42 of the 48. I have eight minus two, six left. Check, I have six $1 bills left, seven people. They can't have another one. I have nothing left to bring down. So this becomes my remainder. Now, if you notice, this 48 and this 48, it's identical. That 0 shows that the 7 can't go into 4, and you're going to end up with the 48. Let me show you the same problem. But doing it just a tiny bit different. So here's my 48. Here's my 7. 7 goes into 4, 0. I already know it's going to be 0, and I know I'm going to get a 4 down here and bring down the 8. So all I have to do is say 7 goes into 4, no. 7 goes into 48, 6. Step 2, 6 times 7, 42. Step 3. Subtract, eight minus two is six, four minus four is zero. So then my six is my remainder. It's the exact same thing, but since I knew that seven didn't go into four, I just Instead of putting the 0 and multiplying and coming up with 48 again down here, I just moved over and said, okay, I'll trade that 4 10s in for 40 1s plus the 8. So it's 48 1s. 7 goes into 48, 6. 6 times 7, 42. Subtract, I have 6 left. Remainder of 6.